Hallelujah. Man. Uh, can I just say a couple of things before uh, we sit down? Firstly, I don't know if you know this, but Kingdom City is uh, quite famous now. Uh, everyone, everyone is impressed uh, with, with, with Kingdom City uh, because you're the fastest growing church in literally the history of the world. The other thing is Pastor Mark and Pastor Jemima are awesome. They are, they are awesome. And, and, I, and, I, and I love them. Pastor Mark and Pastor Jemima have both been in our church in Adelaide. And, uh, and been preaching. Pastor Mark was just there about a month ago. Pastor Jem was there uh, last year. Pastor Jem's Sunday morning was the best Sunday morning we had for the year. She was unbelievable. I mean, can I tell you, she's like this lovely lady who, who preaches, carries herself with grace, but literally scares every demon of hell out of a city. It's unbelievable. And so that, that was awesome. And, uh, and, and can, can, but can I just say, Pastor Mark and, and Pastor Jim are being used by God, not just to uh, spearhead what God's doing here, but they are literally impacting the nation of Australia. And, and so, so what happens here is important. Seriously, what happens here is important because the whole country is looking at Kingdom City. And so the spiritual temperature here is actually having an impact uh, in the greater church. And so uh, we honour you. We thank God for you. I love Pastor Mark. I love everybody. I just love you. And uh, we've just met and we've fallen in love. It's beautiful. If you're watching online on YouTube, welcome. And uh, if it, we, we're glad you're here. And uh, I, I pray God's blessing on YouTube. If you're driving and YouTubing, that is illegal. So pull over and, and God will bless you. If you don't pull over, He won't bless you. So I think that's, it. that's, the, that's my best introduction. I, I tried. Mark Lassie's in our church, and I've actually heard that he preached quite well. We've only lost 40 people from our church. So, hey, how you doing? Let's get, check it out. Uh, but I feel like God's going to do something. He, he did awesome, by the way, and he's my great friend. My wife went to Bible college with him. And so I feel like I'm with my friends. It's, it's an honour to be here, really. This is one of the great privileges in this nation. I feel like God uh, is going to do something in the house by the Spirit of God tonight. And here's the deal. If you're hungry, if you're hungry, God will meet you at your point of faith. And I'm believing right now God's on the throne is alive. The Holy Spirit is in the house. So uh, you may be seated. And uh, again, thank you so much for having me here. If you have a Bible, turn with me, please, to the book of Acts. Thank you, musicians. You may be seated. Can we give the band a hand? How cool is that song, Praise the Father, Praise the Son? Oh, man, that's awesome. Acts chapter 2. My name's David. My wife is Donna. My cat is Mavis. Uh, my boy is James. My other boy is Sam. And we are Christians. Acts chapter 2. Now, I'm going to read Acts chapter 2 in the original King James, in the original, the actual real Bible. We're going to read it in the original King James because it just says it better for me for this. Uh, and I feel like God's going to stir faith in people's hearts and, and God's going to do something good. Are you ready for the word? It says this, it says in verse 1, the first word in this, in this passage in the original King James is and. Somebody say and. It says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance and, and seven times. In this passage is the word and. I preach on this passage a thousand times. I mean, it's my favourite passage in, in the whole Word of God. And one time I'm studying this and jumping from every page is this word and. And, and. Seven times in four verses, we see this word and. And, and, and to me, it's quite interesting because I'm, I'm, I'm just reading and I feel the Holy Spirit just move my heart to look into this word a little bit, this word and. And so I, I, I thought I'm going to look it up in the original language just to see what it meant. So I, I looked it up in the Greek and the word and literally means this, 
and. It also means above and beyond. It also means more than you might expect. And so here we see God talking about the Holy Spirit coming. And every time He talks about the church uh, being uh, empowered by the Holy Spirit, this word and just keeps coming into, into this passage. And, 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 and. And I started to notice that as you read the Word of God, you'll see this word and is constantly connected with the name of the Holy Spirit. When He moves, just you'll see the Word of God says, the Holy Spirit and, the Spirit of God and, or something and the Holy Spirit. And, and so I started to look at this in the Word of God and, and I found myself just looking at the story where Mary uh, hears from the angel of the Lord. The angel comes in, says to Mary, hey, uh, you're going to have... You're going to have a baby. Mary's minding her own business. And, and this baby's a big deal. It's Jesus. He's his, his God. And you're going to have him and it's going to be great. And, and she says, uh, how's this going to happen? And he says this. He says, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. In other words, the Spirit of God's going to touch you. But there's an end. And that end was a creative miracle from God that unlocked the destiny of God on her life and changed humanity. One touch of the Holy Spirit will not only minister to you in this moment, but there is always an end. There is always a greater blessing that God will bring into your world. I, I, uh, I can't, uh, it's a bad habit, but I, I find sometimes at about 4.30 or 5 o'clock, I'll drive home from church, uh, from my office at church, and, and and you drive past McDonald's, and I don't know how they do this. And I, I try to have victory over it, and I really do. But I don't know how they get the smell of the chips uh, in the deep fryer out of the deep fryer through your air conditioner vent into both nostrils simultaneously. And suddenly your, your, your car now smells like McDonald's chips. And so you, you I, don't, I don't even know if it's God or the devil, but you find yourself pulling into the drive through and you're now talking into a metal box to like a 15 year old girl sharing the deepest desires of your heart. You don't even speak like a, 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 a contemporary Christian. You speak like an old school Christian. You're like, bestow upon me your biggest Mac and a pound a quarter thereof. And you're asked for like a vanilla thick shake. You're asking for like one of those apple pies, which is baby food wrapped in cardboard, deep fried, dipped in battery acid. And how many know what I'm talking about? And then, and then, and then you finish your order. And at the end of the order, whether you're in Australia, whether you're in New Zealand, whether you're in South Africa or Singapore or America or South America, wherever you find yourself in the world, no matter what your order is, they're going to ask you the same question in every language, tribe and tongue. And the question is going to be this. I think you know the question. And the question is this. Would you like fries with that? And friends, there's only one answer. Yes. And I don't want to reduce the things of the Holy Spirit to a McDonald's illustration. But sometimes we go to God for one thing. And he says, I've got so much more for you. We might say to God, hey, I want the Holy Spirit. And, and I've got a few thoughts in, in my message tonight. We might say, hey, God, I want the touch of the Holy Spirit. And I feel like God's saying to us, okay, I've heard your order. I know you want the Holy Spirit. But the first thing you might say to us tonight is, would you like power with that? And I don't know about you, but uh, when, when, when I encounter God... When the Spirit of God comes upon people and you might be sitting here tonight and you sense His presence, you, you sense His anointing, you sense the touch of heaven. Do you know what's actually happening is God's power is being released in your life. And, and so it's not just something we sense in this atmosphere. It's the Holy Spirit filling every person with the power of God. I, I don't know about you, but I want power with that. I, I, I don't want to be a Christian just by name and, and by ritual. I want to carry something. I, I want to carry the anointing of God. God. So when impossible things happen, I'm ready to see God shift things and move things because of the power of God. Do you believe that? You know, one time I was on an aeroplane flying in America and I was sitting next to this lady. And, and have you ever sat next? By the way, do you have like a Kurong bookstore here? Do you know? You know, Kurong, yeah, we got those in Adelaide, you know, and it's exciting. We got running water now too. Uh, we're pumped. 
So we were, I was on this aeroplane and I was sitting next to this woman and you know how you can tell someone's a Christian, not by what they say, but what they're wearing. She was wearing a t-shirt with an eagle and it said, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and, and so on. And, and she's wearing a vest. On one side of the vest were the first five of the 10 commandments. On the other side of the vest were the other five of the 10 commandments. Her earrings were those fish, you know, the fish symbol that we used to have on our cars, but then the pastor made us stop doing it because we were giving ungodly salutes to other, and we didn't want to give the church a bad name. And so he, he's, he's, she's there, and she, I mean, she is so Christian, man. She had a Bible and it was so big. I didn't even think Qantas would allow her to bring it on as carrier. And, and her Bible didn't, it wasn't just a Bible, it had a Bible cover. You know, you know what I'm talking about, the Bible cover? And, and if you've got a Bible cover here, you're a real Christian. And, uh, but this person's, this woman's Bible cover was even more Christian because it had Scripture on the front. And I wondered why would it have Scripture on the front? And then I thought maybe it was if the zipper malfunctioned. She could still say the grass withers, the flower fades and the Word of God said, she looked like she had been in the Kurong bookstore during a hurricane, <laughs> walked out with the debris and hopped on the aeroplane. She had these beads, multicolored beads. There's a blue bead, a red bead, a green bead, brown bead, uh, different colored beads. And, and these were beads so people would, you know, ask about the beads and, and then you could tell the gospel story and explain what all the colors were. And I knew this. And I wasn't going to say I was a Christian because I, I didn't really, I felt like, yeah, I didn't want to tell. Uh, and the other thing is, I didn't want to tell her I was a pastor because if I did, I think the rapture might have happened, you know. So, so she's, she's flashing the beads sort of in my, in my, in my area, my face, my eyes. And so I, I couldn't help it. I just, it sort of just crept out. I said, nice beads. She says... They're my evangelism beads. I said, what are, what are they for? She said, evangelism. I said, oh, fair enough. And so she starts telling me the gospel according to the beads. And I knew she wanted me to get saved. And I, was not gonna, I wasn't going to do it. No way. I'm not getting saved for you. You're too, you're, you're too Christian. So I, I wouldn't give her the satisfaction. I knew she thought she had me on the hook, but I never, I never bowed my knee. Uh, so I just put my headphones on. But then I had this thought, Pastor Chad. I, it just was a fleeting thought. I thought, if the future of global evangelism, if the future of the souls of mankind hinge on these beads, we've got a problem. Jesus never see, said you shall receive beads when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. He said you receive power. I mean, when the Apostle Paul was knocked off the horse or whatever he was riding onto the ground, he didn't get up and go, oh, I've got beads. I must change my ways. He was touched with the power of God. And I want to encourage you. So we, we, we need more than just stuff, man. We need old school, Holy Ghost, power of God. The move of the Spirit it still works. Power to shift things and change things. Jesus, Jesus Christ, when He came to earth. He was the incarnation of God. In other words, he was fully God and fully man. Yet he laid aside all of his heavenly benefits so he could function on earth like you and I. And the Bible says in Acts 10 and 38, that God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good. So, so literally every miracle Jesus did was not because He was the Son of God and so He can do all those things. Yes, He was the Son of God, but He laid aside all of those, willingly laid aside all of those benefits. And the way Jesus operated in the power of God was in the exact same fashion that you and I can. He moved in the power of God by the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon Him. And can I encourage you, if Jesus needed power, how much more do you and I need power in 2019? Man, I need the power of God. The world's crazy. I need power. I need power to see our church do what God's called us to do. Kingdom City hasn't happened by accident. It's happened by the power of God. It's happened by the supernatural touch of heaven. Don't underestimate the fact that so many of your pastors and leaders 25 years ago were being touched by the fire of God at youth camps and, and conferences and, and God did something. Don't underestimate what the power of God can do in the name of Jesus. Would you like power with it? I want power with that. I was preaching at church in New Zealand recently. This girl comes up to me 
And I'd preached like a long time and, and done an altar call and prayed for a whole lot of people. And this girl comes up to me after the meeting and I was sort of on my way home and she says, uh, could you pray for me? And I said, sure. And, and so I, I, I sort of did like a, I'm going to pray for you, but and I'm sort of going to go home prayer. And it was kind of like, Father, touch her, bless her in Jesus' name. Amen. I walk off and I was nice to her, but I was sort of keen to go home, which, which was a bit dumb, but it's just, I'm just admitting that. And she, she said, as I walked off, she goes, was that it? I said, what do you, what do you mean? She says, was that it? I said, I don't know, don't know what you're talking about. She said, I came to you in faith. My dad's sick. Their marriage is about to fall apart. She goes, I'm battling with depression and anxiety. I've got all of this going on in my life. I came to you in faith. I came believing God was going to do something. Was that it? I was like, <laughs> no, uh, not at all. Uh, that was a practice, see. Uh, you can't just do it. You've got to warm up, you know. So I pulled the old lawnmower cord. In the name of Jesus. So I put my hand on her head in Jesus' name and she, she hits the ground under the power of the Holy Ghost. So I walked over and thought, well, I reckon that might be it. <laughs> so she, she's on the floor. So I went home and... I didn't really know what else to do. So I went home. I'm in the car on the way to the ho hotel and the Holy Spirit speaks to me and says, David, you know, there's people that come to your church every Sunday needing a breakthrough from God. Don't let them leave going, was that it? Wow. You know, all over the world, people are going to go to church today needing something from God. And sadly, a lot of people are going to leave. And I'm not talking about here, but a lot of people are going to leave and say, was that it? I pray tonight, if you've come hungry, I pray you leave fully satisfied by the goodness of Jesus. That you'd know the goodness of God. Come on, if you believe it in the house, can we give God a praise? Do you, do you want power with that? Yes! Can I, can I give you another one? Acts 13 and 52 says, And the disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. Do you want joy with that? On YouTube, do you want joy with that? Exactly. I knew it. We've got that smart technology. We've been watching you too. That was a joke. <laughs> Unless you've got a Samsung. Joy. Isn't joy a funny thing? Because people think joy and happiness are the same thing. They're not. Happiness, and I'm not an English scholar, but I can tell you the same root word for happiness is the same word happening. I know, it's impressive. I've, I discovered this on the internet. <laughs> happiness is based on what is happening. So if the happenings are good, there's happiness. But when the happenings are bad, there's not happiness. Joy and happiness are different because joy is not based on the external. It's based on what God's doing on the inside of us. And there are days, I don't know about you, but there's been days for me where, when I have not been happy. But I've had joy because they come from two different places. And sadly, so many people sacrifice joy on the altar of immediate happiness. Now I want to encourage you, be filled with the fullness of God. The Bible tells us the joy of the Lord is your strength. Happiness. Oh my goodness. Can I tell you that word strength is a similar word to power. There's something about the power of God and joy that work together. If you've got the joy of Jesus, it stirs up power. I don't know about you, but I want joy. There's nothing worse than a miserable Christian, especially a miserable Pentecostal. Even their tongues are grumpy. Shut up. Put them away. Get happy tongues. Shut up. I mean, when they pray, it's like all the presence of God just goes, God, in the name of Jesus. 
Can I say, I, I feel like when I get around the Holy Spirit, I feel mischief. I, I, I feel freedom. I feel life. I feel peace. A bit more mischief. Hey, hey, you know, there's something about the Spirit of God. Can I tell you, look around this room, there's joy in the house. Does that mean everyone's life in here? You might go to here, everyone's life's perfect. No, it's not perfect. It's that there's a joy even when it's not perfect. Why? Because it doesn't come from the external. It comes from the Holy Spirit. Would you like joy with that? Yes. I've got another one. Number three for the two of you taking notes. It says here, Acts 4.31, And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the Word of God with boldness. Would you like boldness with that? Yes. I want to be bold. I don't want to be on the back foot. I don't want to be a Christian on the back foot. I want to be on the front foot. I want the boldness of the Spirit of God. You and I need bold. There are times where we need to be bold. Be bold. I, you know, one, about four years ago in our church, we have a girl. Uh, she's not in our church now. She's a sweet girl. and Her name's India. And India decided to cut school. And instead of going to school... She went to town, that's in Adelaide where our big buildings are, some are up to three stories. <laughs> she goes into the city with her, with her boyfriend. And, and do you use the word wag? Just wag school? I get, we are in the same country. And uh, <laughs> I just... So she wags school and, uh, and, and decides that she's going to hang with her boyfriend. So it was a wet day in December. Adelaide doesn't get wet in December. So when it gets wet unexpectedly, the roads get slippery. She steps into traffic, or steps, steps across the road. There's a car coming. Her boyfriend grabs her by the school bag, but her little feet uh, get stuck from under her. The car runs her over front wheel and back wheel, and, and she rolls 30 feet. Now, it's crazy because sometimes in the middle of a real difficult situation, there's miracles. Miracle number one, she got run over in front of a hospital. Now, we at Kingdom City don't recommend getting run over. But if you do, it is a lot more. <laughs> Let's just say it just cuts out the middleman, you know. The other thing that I need to tell people, this is miracle number two, Pastor Joel Rolt. That is, there was six nurses outside smoking. Now, let's be fair. In an era of fake news where you might only hear one side of the argument, I want to present another side. People say smoking kills. I could argue in this case, smoking saves lives. That's the loudest amen I've had all night. So literally, there's nurses there. There was an unoccupied ambulance. They had this 14-year-old girl in an ambulance in the Women's and Children's Hospital within eight minutes. That's a miracle. She gets, like, without that, it would have been over. That's a miracle. We get to the hospital. I'm going to make a long story a bit shorter. Uh, her grandmother rings me and says, would you go and pray? I'd already been in, and, and it was a very confronting visit to hospital. She was incredibly broken. She was messed up from head to toe, pelvis broken in four places. They asked me if I'd pray, and then they asked me would I go back because she was deteriorating. They said to me, this was their words to me, and, and implied by the grandmother as well. But when I went and spoke to the doctors, they said to me, she'll never walk if she lives, and she, she probably won't. She's deteriorating. She said, she'll never walk, talk, hear, or speak again. And so I went and prayed. On the way there, I got a phone call from a preacher. He prayed for me as... I went in and so I didn't feel like I was going alone. The whole church, uh, our church in Adelaide was praying. Everyone on Facebook was praying, on Instagram was praying, Twitter was praying. I even updated my, my MySpace just in case. <laughs> so I remember I went, in, I went into the hospital and, and I thought I need, I need to pray, but I've got to, be, I've got to be sensitive to what's going on in there because, you know, you don't know, uh, you've, got, you've got to be sensitive. And this is the ICU, you know, she's on life support, she's in a coma. So I prayed put my hand on her and I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would touch her, that you would minister to her. And then at that very moment, I felt the most powerful thing in the whole world, and that's the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, the anointing's powerful, but let me say this also, trying to hide the Holy Spirit is like trying to hide a kangaroo. <laughs> Once the anointing of God comes on you, it's pretty hard to, oh, in Jesus' name. 
I mean, trying to hide a kangaroo is pretty... You have your family over for a cup of tea, hide Skippy behind the curtain. He'll pop out at an inopportune time. So I'm praying, Father, that you'd touch it. And it just came out of my mouth. I, 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 and I'm, not I'm not a legend at all. I was trying to be sensitive. I'm saying, India! I said, you will live and not die in the name of Jesus. And I could feel every eye looking at me. <laughs> and so I'm like, Father, touch it. I rebuke that spirit of death in the name of Jesus. I, I went old school. Sometimes you can't be Pentecostal. You've got to be Pentecostal. You know, just... <laughs> You can't be charismatic. You've just got to be a charismaniac, you know, old school. Because old school works. Sometimes you just got to rattle the gates of hell every now and then. I said, I refuse to do a funeral for you, for you're going to live in Jesus' name. And then, then, do you know, Pastor Chad, I just ran out of English things to say. And I am bilingual. I speak two languages. I speak English and I speak old school Holy Ghost. So I speak, I speak in tongues. And, and, and so... English, I just thought I was, I'd run out of things. And it just seemed like tongues was going to work. And you know, it's actually, English is my second language. I had to learn that. Tongues, I never had to learn. I just went to church one day and pop, out it came. You know, I'll tell you why, because I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. The place I'm from, I, I, I know the language of the place I'm from, and I'm an ambassador from that world into this world. And so maybe you're here and you've never prayed in the Spirit. I pray God will unlock that in the name of Jesus. Boom, how does it happen? I feel like anything could happen. I'm going to preach for like three more minutes. Then we're going to pray and believe God. I just pray your faith is... And, and so, and, and so I, I, I'm, in the name of Jesus, and it just came out of my mouth. Shabbat Shabbat I felt every eye in that room. I'm going to pretend I said this. I didn't have the guts, but I wanted to. I said, I, I, I'm pretending. So I said to the doctors, I didn't really, but I'm pretending. I said, you're good doctors. You're very good. But I've been sent by the great physician. It just needs me to carry out a procedure. And then back, I didn't say that. I was, I was scared. I think, what I, I think my exact words to them were like, <laughs> which actually reminds me of a time I was in an elevator and, and Carl Lentz and Justin Bieber were in the elevator. So I walked in and I see them. Do you want to know what I said to them? This, this was my exact words. I was like... <sighs> Honestly, you can quote that. Write that down if you want. One month later, that girl, actually six weeks later, that girl was literally walked out of hospital, came to church, <laughs> seeing, hearing, walking, talking. Why? Because sometimes we've got to get a bit bold. Come on, somebody, if you believe it, give God a praise. i got one more. Can I give you one more? It's a short one. You can... It's nice when people stand like that. I'm very encouraged. Matthew 3.11. 3, 3, Matthew John the Baptist is speaking. We don't know too much about John the Baptist. We know that he uh, wore organic clothing. Uh, we know that he ate clean wild locusts and honey. We know he was the cousin of Jesus and we know that he was a Baptist. Uh, and he wasn't just a Baptist, the Baptist. That's a big deal. John the Baptist. And so he says here, uh, I baptise in water. Basically, I could paraphrase it. He's saying, I'm John, I'm Baptist. But my cousin Jesus, he's Pentecostal. So I'll baptise you in water. He'll baptise you in the Holy Ghost. But he says he'll baptise you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. I feel like God's asking us tonight, would you like fire with that? Now, now, now come on, somebody, if you be believe in the fire of the Holy Spirit. Can I, can I tell you something about fire? Uh, it's hot. Uh, you don't touch it. Good with marshmallows. So uh, fire is interesting because depending on your proximity to it, it, fire demands a response, but it depends where you are in proximity to the fire. For example, if there was a fire in here, we would leave and go outside where there is no fire. If it was me, I'd just push the women and the children out of my way. I'd run outside. I'm kidding. That's a joke. I'd let the children go first. And
<laughs> it's true. Anyway. So, is this going all right tonight, Pastor Chad? Are we going all right? I'm being, sorry I'm being naughty. But truthfully, if there was a fire in here, we'd get out of here and go to safety. So there'd be a sense of urgency to go out. If, but, but, but people that were outside would see this building on fire or any building on fire. The first thing they'll do is they'll get their phone, they'll take a photo. Uh, or, or, but if you've seen a building burning down, there's always a crowd of people that come to watch what well, fire is compelling. And so when the fire of God is in a church, it has the same responses. It causes the church to go with urgency. But it also compels the world to come. There's nothing more lethal to the kingdom of darkness than people of God full of the fire of the Holy Spirit. You know, Samson, he managed to tie 300 foxes' tails together and he lit them on fire. I don't know how he did it, but he did it. And one translation says they ran through the city with a sense of urgency. Why? Because their, their tails were on fire. I pray that God would light us afresh with the fire of the Holy Spirit because there's a work to be done. We've got to win Australia for Jesus. From Adelaide to Perth to Darwin to Hobart, everything in between, Sydney, Melbourne. God wants to do something. And I believe He's looking for a people on fire with the Holy Spirit.